Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today's notes are going to be 1.4, part 2, solving absolute value equations. It's going to be a little bit different than the previous lesson because we're going to see absolute value on both sides now. We're going to be looking for seven things to write down, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we would want to make sure is if a equals 4, what could be equal? And then if a equals negative 8, what could be equal? Go ahead and take time now just to review this real quick. You can just jot down your answer. You don't need to copy. And then once you're done, click play to check your answer. So if a is equal to 4, b could also be equal to negative 4 because the absolute value of 4 is equal to the absolute value of negative 4, right? b could also be 4. Um, if a is negative 8, b could also be positive 8 because the absolute value of negative 8 is equal to absolute value of 8. What we're going to write down first is, or next, is how to solve two absolute values. So this would be good to copy in your notes right here. And notice you're still going to write two equations, except the second equation you're just changing everything to its opposite. So go ahead and take time now to pause the video here so you can write down number two in your notes. And once you're done, click play to see what we do next. So these are going to be two examples that I work through, and I'm going to show you what that looks like to change the second equation to its opposite. The first time we're going to try this letter A, we will have 3x minus 4 is equal to x, or 3x minus 4 is equal to negative x. So you're basically just changing it to negative x. And then you would solve by getting your variables on one side and your constants on the other. I'm going to do this one first on the left. So I'm going to subtract 3x so that I get negative 4 is equal to negative 2x. And then divide both sides by negative 2. x is equal to 2. On this one, I'm going to solve the same way, except now I'll have negative 4 is equal to negative 4x. When I divide both sides by negative 4, x is equal to 1. Okay, over here, a little bit different because now you have what we're going to distribute. So my first equation will be 4x minus 10 equals 2 parentheses 3x plus 1. But my second equation will be 4x minus 10 is equal to 2 parentheses negative 3x minus 1. So again, right here, change to opposites. That's all we're doing, okay? I'm going to start with my left side. So I have 4x minus 10 is equal to, distribute, 6x plus 2. And then I would just get all my x's to one side. So I'm going to add 10. i bring that over here. And I'm also going to subtract 6x. So I kind of did like double elimination there. So I'll have negative 2x left and then 12. So that x is equal to negative 6, okay? And then over here, I will still have 4x minus 10, but is equal to, again, distributing, but negative, so negative 6x minus 2. See how it changed from here to here? I'm going to add 10 to both sides and add 6x to the other side. These 10s and these 6x's cancel out, so I'll have 10x is equal to 8. And then when I divide both sides by 10, I'm just going to get a fraction here. x is equal to 4 fifths. So here are my two answers. x is equal to negative 6 or x is equal to negative 4 fifths. Or sorry, 4 fifths. Okay. You are going to get a chance to try this next one on your own. So let's go ahead and pause the video here. Remember, you are changing the second little bit to opposites for one of the equations. Okay, go ahead and get started. 
Okay, so for number three, I'm going to have x plus 8 is equal to 2x plus 1, or x plus 8 is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Go ahead and solve this one. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, subtract 2x. So I'm going to get negative 7 is equal to negative 1x. Divide both sides by negative 1. x is equal to positive 7. And then over here for number 4, I'll have, oh, sorry, just kidding. Keep going here. Subtract 8 on both sides for this one for 3. Add 2x on both sides to get rid of that guy. So I will have 3x is equal to negative 9 x is equal to negative 3. Okay, so here are my two solutions for number 3. Number 4 was going to look like this. 3 parentheses x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 5, or 3 parentheses x minus 4 is equal to negative 2x minus 5. I'm going to go ahead and distribute. 3x minus 12 is equal to 2x plus 5. And then I'm going to add 12 to both sides, subtract 2x from both sides. So I'm going to have 1x, or just x, is equal to 17 for one of my solutions. Or 3x minus 12 is equal to negative 2x minus 5. Adding 12 to both sides, adding 2x to both sides, I will get 5x is equal to 7. Divide both sides by 5, you can say x is equal to 7 fifths, or 1 and 2 fifths. Okay? The next little bit we're going to talk about are extraneous solutions, and those are when you have to reject a solution because it does not satisfy the original equation. And this is where it helps when you check your solutions to make sure that it makes a true equation once you plug in your x or your y. Let's go ahead and pause the video now so you can write down what an extraneous solution is and then click play to see how it's done. All right, so this would be an example of an extraneous solution for this one. This is, this is taking it back to yesterday, or last class. We're going to have 2x plus 12 is equal to 4x, or 2x plus 12 is equal to negative 4x, okay? we would start to solve for x on both sides. So I'm just going to subtract 2x. We're going to get 12 is equal to 2x, so x is equal to 6. And then over here, oops, subtract 2x. 12 is equal to negative 6x, so x is equal to negative 2, OK? Even though I'm given solutions here, they don't necessarily mean that they fit. So what I'm going to do is plug in each of these values. So I'm going to start with this one. 2, parentheses, 6, back into the original equation, plus 12 is equal to 4 times 6. Okay, I know 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24. So the absolute value, of equal, absolute value of 24 is equal to 24? Yes, this is a solution. Over here, though, if I plug in the negative 2, so 2 times negative 2 plus 12 is equal to 4 times negative 2. I know 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 12 is negative 8. Or sorry, not negative 8, positive 8. So absolute value of 8 is equal to, and this 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. This is not true. So this would be rejected. Okay. So your only solution would be this x is equal to 6. So you're going to try this one to see if there is an extraneous solution. Go ahead and pause the video and try it. Check your solutions just to make sure. And once you're done, click play to check to work. All right, so we would write our two equations like this. x plus 5 is equal to x plus 11, or x plus 5 is equal to negative x minus 11. I'm going to start solving over here. And when you started solving this one, 
you notice that all your x's cancel out. So you end up getting 0 is equal to 6. And you automatically reject this one because 0 is not equal to 6. So no solution for this one. But if you notice, when you come over here, we're going to get some solution. 2x is equal to negative 16, so x is equal to negative 8. If you plug in negative 8 back into the original equation, they both are able to be equal to the absolute value of 3. Okay? The last one I'm going to have you try once again to check your solution, so let's go ahead and pause. This is the last one on your notes. Once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, so my two equations are as follows. We have 5x minus 2 is equal to 5x plus 4, or 5x minus 2 is equal to negative 5x minus 4. Go ahead and start solving. And once again, this first one, these 5x's cancel out, so I can't say 0 is equal to 6 again. So rejected, but not a solution. But here, when I start to add, I am going to get, I think, a fraction for this one. So I have 10x is equal to negative 2. When I divide both sides by 10, I get x is equal to negative 1 fifth. Okay? If you plug that back in, I would get 5 times negative 1 fifth would be negative 1 minus 2. So that's going to be negative 3, and then the same thing here, negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3, so yes, this is my only solution of negative 1 fifth. Okay, that's going to conclude our notes for today. Just make sure you have those seven things written down. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next.